Hello, booktube. Although you cannot tell, I am currently at a conference, so yay for pre-recording. That being said, I'm not going to be uploading next week, and this week I'm just going to do a very fast video, uh, and that is podcast for book people. So um, at some points of time, it can feel sort of like, well, why would I ever listen to audio other than audiobooks? Like audiobooks have become such a big thing. But you know, sometimes you have a book hangover. Sometimes you can't just start right into the next one. And sometimes you're you get stuck trying to find your next read. Like I find with audiobooks specifically, a lot of times I'll have like play play the first half an hour of them one after the other and really just like not jive with any. Um, so when I'm in that sort of mood, I really like to listen to podcasts instead. And I have a number of bookish podcasts that I thought I would recommend. They approach books and reading and the book industry in a lot of different ways. So I think there should be something of interest in this list for everybody. But without further ado, let's talk about the book podcasts. In this list, I have uh, five podcasts that I like super recommend and then have some honorable mentions. Uh, if you don't find any of these to be to your taste, I guess, or if you just want more. The first one is Overdue, which is a podcast by Andrew and Craig. And it's sort of a split in between a comedy podcast and like literary criticism. So Andrew and Craig switch off in between reading a classic or a book that they should have already read. Um, so that does end up being a lot of classics, um, but also they sometimes do series on like the Twilight books or Goosebumps or books that are um, commercially very successful uh, and a lot of people have read but they haven't. And the podcast is basically one of them explaining the book to the other one and the other one often goes off and uh, does some internet research on the book and the author and together it actually makes a very informative podcast but it's also very funny. Uh, because these are overdue books they uh, don't really shy away from spoilers so if there is a book or book series where you really don't want to know any of the plot that's happening. Sk skip that episode, but overall I really enjoy this podcast um, when I'm in a book mood, but not really in a book right now. The next podcast on the list is Marlon and Jake Read Dead People. So this is author Marlon James and his editor Jake Morrissey talking about books and because they want to be sassy, um, they are only talking about books by dead people. So in this podcast, Marlon James and Jake Morrissey are talking about books that um, are also maybe sort of classic or at least where the authors have died. Um, so they do a lot of really interesting um, sort of like comparisons between different authors and talk about their own literary tastes. And I really enjoy this one, number one, because uh, Marlon James has a great accent and also because I feel like a lot of people talk about these classics and these older books with uh, a lot of reverence whereas they really you know aren't afraid to make their opinions known about certain books. Uh, I find that very refreshing. Uh, these guys are also very funny and charismatic. Again just two bookish people talking about books um, and it's it's one of my favorites. So next up we have The Stacks, which is a sort of more author interview show. The host, Tracy, is very big into nonfiction. Uh, she sort of describes her reading tastes as uh, uh, books that you'd give your dad, which Let's let's take gender out of nonfiction. Um, but I've gotten a lot of really great reading suggestions from that podcast, and she's a really wonderful interviewer. This is the podcast I heard about Seek You on, and this is probably one of my favorite books of the last couple of years. Uh, so again, I just get really great recommendations from this podcast, and it's really wonderful listening to authors talk about their writing process and their thoughts behind their books. The episodes sort of switch off in between a uh, uh, author interview and then the author and Tracy uh, have a book club so they'll uh, the invited author will pick a book that they love and then Tracy and the author will read it and discuss it on the podcast uh, so uh, both both of the different segments I guess uh, are really really fun and entertaining and um, give you a lot of insight into the uh, writing process and the books and 
etc, etc, etc. And I always come out of the stacks with a list of books that I want to try. Next up, we have Sentimental Garbage. This is the one podcast on this list that isn't entirely books all the time. Um, and that's because the host, Caroline Donahue, very recently switched from uh, talking only about books to talking about books and other media such as music and movies. Overall the back catalog is like 90% books but yes I thought I would put that disclaimer up top. Uh, so Sentimental Garbage is about the media I guess that isn't taken very seriously by the mainstream because it's marketed for women. These, these are books like Bridget Jones Diaries and Eat Pray Love and uh, books that have uh, gotten critically panned um, but are sort of overall beloved. Um, and this is in part because these books are sort of viewed as sentimental. So in each episode, Caroline and her uh, guest talk about a book or another piece of media that uh, they both love and they're not scared to get sentimental or um, sappy about these books that mean a lot to them. The moral of the story of this podcast is uh, you can love what you love, even if it's not cool. And I, I think that's a great message. So highly recommend this podcast. Last in the sort of top list here, I have Get Booked, which is a podcast from Book Riot, where they have very, very, very specific recommendations for their listeners. Uh, so basically, I feel like very specific book recommendations for my followers videos have been big on BookTube recently. And this is that video in podcast form, but they've been going for years. People will write in requesting books ranging from like, two really competent people trying to kill each other to period fiction pertaining to baseball to sweet and heartfelt felt queer magical stories things things like that where there's like a very specific vibe or trope or something that um, the reader is looking for that maybe they found in another book and are looking for more books like that and um, because the the book riot people are really on their shit they have so many recommendations of books that you've never heard of so this would be a great podcast if you're sort of stuck on finding your next read because they have so many ideas and so many of the books mentioned in get book are books that I don't even hear about even though I spend a ton of time on the book internet and on booktube. So highly recommend Get Book. Now just very quickly going through a couple of honorable mentions, maybe just describing them in a sentence. Um, another great podcast for book lovers and people who are into sort of the culture of reading and the culture around books and bookish people is Reading Glasses. This is a podcast by Bria Grant and Mallory O'Mara and they talk a lot about um, books and reading, etc. Like all these podcasts, but they also talk a lot about sort of like the act of reading and um, book culture that springs up around books and sort of inter internet booky places also. So I, I think that, that podcast is much more sort of about the culture of reading and less about the books themselves, but it is very fun to listen to. There's of course the book review from the New York Times. This is another great podcast if you just want to hear like five minute interviews with big name authors that are releasing new books. I always find the most interesting bit of this podcast is the bit at the end where the books desk at the New York Times is going around and they're talking about what they're currently reading. Um, and that for me is uh, very insightful because again, at, at these sort of larger podcasts at the larger news organizations, you're normally hearing about the same like 10 to 20 top line books that are being released right now and getting a lot of hype and PR, etc. Um, but hearing what um, these professional readers are reading in their free time is uh, very interesting. There was a time <laughs> one of the guys on the podcast was reading Ulysses for literally nine months and it felt very relatable to me. I was like, ah, yes, even the professionals struggle sometimes. Anyways, in the vein of book recommendations, another great podcast is What Should I Read Next? So Anne Bogle uh, basically brings on a listener and they talk about the very specific um, uh, things that that listener likes and dislikes in a book. And 
uh, and recommends three books that she thinks they'll love. This is, I think, a very interesting podcast because lots of different types of readers go on. So some of the episodes I am like, oh God, I would never, I hate that. I hate that idea. I hate the sound of those books. And then some of them I'm like, oh, this person is just like me. This is... This is what I need to be reading. Um, so it's a great way to sort of understand yourself better as a reader um, and, you know, get, get some good titles to read. Okay, two more <laughs> on my honorable mentions list. Um, one is So Many Damn Books. Uh, this would honestly probably be up in my favorites, except one of the co-hosts just left. I, I haven't gotten a vibe check on the show moving forward. Like, I definitely like podcasts more when you have two co-hosts instead of a co-host and a guest most of the time, just because I feel like podcasts like really feed into that sort of like friendly banter vibe. I don't know why it works so well for that, but that's that's just the type of podcast I like listening to. But anyways, Christopher is still running the podcast. So So Many Damn Books is basically another book podcast where they're most of the time interviewing an outside guest who's written a book. It definitely has a bit more of a literary fiction bent than some of these other author interview podcasts that I've been talking about. Uh, so that's its sort of special thing. And also, as with all of these podcasts, you know, a good podcast, you just sort of end up loving the hosts. And I think both Christopher and Drew are very charismatic. And I always like hearing what they're reading. Um, and hopefully that sort of continues going forward to be a good podcast. Last but not least, I have long form. So long form is technically a podcast that talks about long form writing on the internet or for uh, news outlets or whatever. But in practice, long form is really a lot of investigative journalists and nonfiction writers going on to promote their newest uh, books. So that's that's why I think it's a great podcast to listen to if you're into nonfiction and you want to know sort of the new releases in sort of investigative journalism. And um, there's there's a lot of memoir authors on there as well. Sort of all things serious nonfiction. These guys talk about it. So that's it. Those are my book podcast recommendations. Uh, if you have any book podcast recs that you go to when you're in between audiobooks or you know, just just need to not constantly be reading. Um, leave leave them in the description below. Uh, I'd I'd love to get some more recommendations. Uh, and other than that, I'm going to be taking off next week because I'm gone at this conference. Um, but I will see you guys in April with my March wrap up, and I look forward to it. Okay, bye. <laughs>